Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Helms. This video is part of a series on inherited diseases and breed risk diseases. The most deadly of those diseases is gastric dilatation and volvulus, or GDV. It's otherwise known for its common name of bloat. In some breeds, it is one of the most common genetic problems. 40% of Great Danes, for example, will suffer from GDV sooner or later, and many of them will die because of it. Bloat occurs most frequently in dogs with deep, narrow chest. Boxers, Greyhounds, Collies, German Shepherds, Doberman Pinschers, Weimaraners, and many other breeds. GDV occurs when the stomach twists on itself, shutting off the esophagus at one end and the outlet for the stomach into the intestines on the other end. The blood supply to the stomach also gets caught in the twist, so part or all of the stomach can start to die from lack of blood and oxygen. Meanwhile, the stomach is continuing to produce the acidic fluid that helps to break down food within the stomach, and the digestive process also produces gas. With no way for the stomach juice and gas to empty into the intestines or to be vomited back up, the stomach starts to dilate like filling up a balloon. This x-ray uh, is a normal abdomen and a normal stomach. So the dog is laying on its side, its head is that way. This is the heart and the lungs. Air is black, so the air around the pet is black, the air in the lungs is black. The stomach is right here and it has some gas in it, which is very normal. Uh, it's not real big, you can kind of see the outline of it, sort of this kidney bean shape. Um, the stomach has folds in it and you can actually see those folds in the x-ray. Um, so the stomach should sit here right behind the liver um, and it should be fairly small. When it's full of food, it's probably two or three times that big, uh, but the food is going to look more solid. It's not going to look like gas or air. This view is a, a dog who is starting to bloat. We have this big round stomach that's filling up with gas. It's starting to bulge a little bit beyond the ribs. It has not yet twisted. Uh, right here we see the tail end of the spleen, so that's right next to the stomach. Uh, when a dog has a GDV, the spleen often gets caught in the twist and sometimes we have to remove the spleen when we go in there to fix the stomach. So this dog has a GDV that's progressed to the next step where the stomach has actually flipped on itself and you can see all this gas and air building up and the stomach is now abnormally positioned and it's bulging out behind the ribs. So if you saw this dog in real life, you would be able to see that bulge uh, behind the rib cage where that stomach is getting bigger and bigger. Several things are happening here that quickly lead to severe problems. The stomach is dying and sometimes the spleen is caught in the twist and also dying. The bloated stomach interferes with blood flow from the rest of the body going back up to the heart, so the heart starts to struggle and shock sets in. The stomach will eventually rupture if the heart doesn't fail first. Left untreated, the disease is quickly fatal, sometimes in as little as 30 minutes. Emergency surgery is needed as quickly as possible to fix the problem, which sometimes means removing the spleen and part of the stomach. Emergency hospitals manage to save 80% of these dogs if they are there in time, but it's at great cost to the dog and to your wallet, usually costing several thousand dollars. You need to be aware of the symptoms so that you can rush your dog to a surgeon as soon as possible for the best possible outcome. Signs include retching or dry heaving, but no vomit is produced since it can't get past the twist in the esophagus, abdominal pain, grunting, laying in a prayer position with the front legs down and the back legs standing up, restlessness or distress, or bulging out of the abdomen behind the ribs on the left side of the body. A preventative surgery in which the stomach is tacked down or sutured in place so it cannot twist can be done when a pet is young, such as at the time of spaying or neutering. Stomach tacking can also be done laparoscopically using a fiber optic scope and small incisions. Although this procedure is definitely not a low cost one, it's still far less expensive than treating bloat once it occurs and it could save your dog's life. If your dog is at risk because of his or her breed but is not stomach tacked, don't let your dog exercise strenuously after meals and feed two to three smaller meals per day versus one large big one. Mixing some canned food in with your dog's kibble has been shown to decrease the risk for GDV. Using a raised feeder increases risk, so it's best to put your dog's bowls on the floor unless some other problem, such as neck pain, exists. It used to be recommended to restrict water around mealtime, but when and how much water a dog drinks has not been found to make a difference to the risk. We hope that you and your dog never have to experience gastric dilatation and volvulus, and that you will consider stomach tacking so that you never have to worry about it.